Serious respiratory problems are on the rise in Afghanistan. And this doctor says there's one main reason, pollution. Heart and lung can't differentiate the poison and other particles that are in the air now. And there are plenty of particles, partly because of the fumes from Kabul's growing traffic. Another culprit, indoor stoves. Wood is expensive, so some Afghans burn whatever they can find, including plastic and rubber. When it comes to cars, the Afghan government closes its offices on Thursdays to reduce traffic. It has also banned imports of cars made before 2002. But the effect, if any, has been impossible to measure. We have not any standard about um, air pollution quality index. We don't know which index we are living in that. Afghanistan's Environmental Protection Agency is trying to change that. It just installed a new machine to measure pollution. The middle term plan is only one for now. And uh, the, for uh, long term, we have to have more than 11. But getting enough machines to measure pollution in all of Kabul will take years. Officials at the Environmental Protection Agency hope to use this one to start learning about what's in the air. They then plan to educate Afghans on how to make the air cleaner by using gas or electric heaters or driving less. During the winter, the air quality in Kabul isn't so bad thanks to the snow and rain that keeps the ground wet. But when it's dry, the city's many unpaved streets means there's almost always dust in the air. The air may be cleaner, but doctors say there are more pollution-induced breathing problems in winter, only made worse by the cold and damp. Doctors and environmental officials say that unless something is done about Kabul's growing pollution problem, more and more Afghans will continue to get sick. In the fight to improve air quality, few people here are breathing easy. Jennifer Glass, Al Jazeera, Kabul.